In 1861, Thomas Starr King, who was serving as pastor of the First Unitarian Church in San Francisco, went to the Yosemite and came back, and he told his congregation, it's our goal as Californians to build up Yosemites of the soul. In other words, Yosemite as a natural environment stood for the more heightened society that Californians should create. I think they expected to find spectacular forests that they found was even far more spectacular than they anticipated. It's very difficult not to come away with the sense of being in something that could very easily be considered a sacred place. The desert lands of California needed to be preserved in vast landscapes. The Monterey Cypress only grows naturally two places in the world. We are human beings who need to be outdoors. And I remembered just being very moved. You could still see the carved poems in the wall. It's an altogether different experience walking the California coast. I would rather spend a month here than any place in the world. A lot of these places were in do or die situations. By the time the preservationist effort prevails, uh, some 93% of the redwood forest had been lost. I said to myself, I will start a campaign immediately to make a public park of this place. When we have parks, all people, not just the rich, but all people will be able to enjoy them. To just build these places and see the next generation of people coming out has been really inspiring. This is the one place where people can actually relax. Every park starts with a core of individuals who knew the magic of a place, felt the passion, and had the energy and the commitment to turn it into a state park. It's a story of the power of the individual. Although what we preserve in our state park system is real estate, the park's movement was, at its core, a thing of the spirit. California has always led the way in preservation, and the fact that California parks are threatened now is of great concern. Does this mean that as California goes, the rest of the nation goes? We're not just doing this for today. We're doing this for the centuries to come. The value is holding on to a piece of our heritage. It's a gift to the future. That's why we preserve state parks, to remind ourselves where we have been, so we can keep oriented to where we want to be going. To be a place where natural processes are preserved in perpetuity for all generations. It's not just for a few people to use up. You don't set them aside for a future road or a future housing development. This whole movement is an essential part of an ongoing conversation about who we are as a society and as a nation. between public recreation and wildlife conservation, it's our own constant struggle.